The Boruto series has just introduced four new villains, a villain group that we will be calling for the moment Shinju. After almost 20 chapters without a true villain, Kijimoto has now cooked up his first true villain in this series. And with all of the information that we have been given, we can not only determine the abilities that they possess, but we can already see that these villains may be on the same level as the Naruto villains that we have gotten. This can already be seen in the foreshadowing of these villains and they have been foreshadowed ever since the first part of the Boruto series. Starting off with the most recent foreshadowing that is found in the second chapter of the timescape. In that chapter, we learn about the origin of these villains and why Code is to blame. As in that chapter, we are told how Code accidentally affected and changed the Tentails because prior to that, the Tentails behaved off instinct and that instinct was to eat whatever living thing was around it or in its vicinity until they became an Otsutsuki. However, due to what Code did to the Tentails by mixing his chakra or blood with the Tentails to create the Claw Grimes so he can use them as tools and it would possess some of his abilities, he changed the Tentails forever, allowing it to gain consciousness and become a sentient entity. This was foreshadowed in that chapter with one of the Claw Grimes calling Kawaki and Otsutsuki. However, this is not the only piece of foreshadowing that we have received as early on in the Boruto series, we have another group of four villains that are quite similar to the Senju. Looking back at these villains, they all seem to foreshadow the events that are currently happening. These villains were introduced in the anime canon arc where Mitsuki went rogue and ended up going to the Land of Stone. In that arc, we learn of creatures called Akuta. Just like the Krogrimes, the person who created them wanted to use them as tools so that it could protect the Land of the Stone. The person that created these creatures was Anoki, and they worked perfectly at first, just like Code and his Krogrimes worked perfectly in the beginning of his creation. However, just like the Tentel they developed their own ego and Anoki was not able to control them anymore. There were four members of this group and they all developed their own ego and will. And just like Code with the Tentails, they ended up backstabbing their leader and did what they wanted. The events that take place in this arc are quite similar to the events that are currently happening in the most recent chapter of the time skip. As the Shinshu developed their own will and they are now discovering what interests them as their will allowed them to gain the thirst for knowledge and they have now developed their own curiosities. Now, they are no longer under Code's control and are able to do whatever they want and desire. And with the rise of things like ChatGPT and various different AI, everyone is afraid that if we let these different systems grow without any control, they could eventually develop their own ego and become sentient beings. In the Boruto series, we see this taking place. These villains that Kijimoto has just introduced is a commentary on that fear that has been discussed all throughout fiction. So, just off these few things, that we are starting to connect, I am already hyped because I am confident that these new villains could be on par with characters like Obito, Madara, and Pain. We might be getting our amazing villain group in the Boruto series. So, to summarize the origin of these new villains, Code, who wanted to get revenge on Kawaki and become an Otsutsuki so that he could not only complete Ishiki's will, but see if he truly loved Aida, he ends up using the Tentails as a tool, mixes his DNA with the Tentails, and forms the Claw Grime. However, Code, who possesses is Ishiki's DNA to some extent as he was able to tap into Ishiki's thousands of years of experience as we saw in the code arc. And in chapter 75, we learned that Code's claw mark is a Sinjutsu. All these factors put together played a part in creating this new villain group as the Tentails has now developed its ego and its own will. In addition, it has been given the power of the people that it has bitten and turned into trees as seen by the abilities and the appearance of some of the members of this new group. So let's break down who exactly they come from. The first one that we are introduced to is the fat one, the one that comes from Bug. This is visible by the teeth, body type, and hair that this member of the Shinshu possesses. In addition, Code confused him with Bug, which most likely is due to the fact that it stole Bug's chakra signal alongside its appearance. This shouldn't be hard to believe, as this was the case with the Yzetsus that also stem from the Tentel, as they were able to take the appearance and chakra signal of the people they touched, which caused a lot of confusion in the camps that they ended up invading in the fourth great ninja war. What's very interesting to me is that this version of Bug has some pretty unique jutsus and abilities. I don't believe that Bug was a fighter back in the days, which is why I find it very interesting that this member of the Shinshu was able to use various jutsus. So it either means two things. The first and the most natural conclusion would be that Bug was actually able to use these abilities and because of his old age, he just wasn't shown to be a fighter because he got old and retired, but he may have been able to use ninjutsu in the past. 
ass without the Tentel's amp that they ended up receiving, alongside the abilities that they got from the people they bit, it allowed them to become so strong to the point where they can push Boruto back. Because Bug would never be able to do that without the Tentel's buff that he received. The next member of the Shinshu villain group is a version that looks like Sasuke. When I first saw this version of the Shinshu, I knew exactly that Sasuke was cooked. Just like the Shinshu that looks like Bug, this one probably also has Sasuke chakra signal. Which is why Boruto knew automatically that that was Sasuke. And it's also another reason why Boruto says that he panicked and almost led to the destruction of the planet. Because after Boruto saw this new version of Sasuke, he ended up getting hit with all the emotions and he most likely blames himself for what ended up happening to Sasuke. So he wanted to get rid of his problem immediately and take care of business and he ended up acting rashly and almost got beat by all three of the Shinshu. To me, it seems that Boruto believes that he can reverse the effects that are currently happening, which is quite funny and ironic when you think about the omnipotence. But something that is quite intriguing to me, and I don't know if Kijimoto is doing this on purpose, but everything Boruto wishes for, the complete opposite ends up taking place. He told his mother that he would be back and see her after his mission, but Naruto and Hinata ended up getting sealed. He says that he will prove this prophecy of Momoshiki to be wrong, but he ends up losing everything. He also said that the fight that he had between Kawaki would only end up being a simple quarrel between brothers. But it ended up turning into an event that affects the whole shinobi system as a whole. And now he tried to prevent the worst future from taking place and he failed to do that as the Tentiles has now finally evolved and replaced Code as the villain in the story. Every promise, every wish, or every attempt at stopping something from happening has never seemed to work out for Boruto. As now he has to fight this new version of the Tentiles to prevent the world from dying or being destroyed. As, if he ends up dying, it is over for everyone in this planet. And looking back, we all wish for Sasuke to regain his Renegon, but we could have never predicted that this would end up happening this way. As the Shinshu version of Sasuke must have all the abilities that Sasuke has access to, which alongside his power from the Tentels will make him an unstoppable threat. The next member of this group is the one that looks like a female. At first, a lot of people believed that she was Delta, but after we saw her use her Earth-style Jutsu, we knew exactly who she was. She is Moegi, the leader of Team 10, who used the same ability against Amado, which lets us know almost 100% that she has to be Moegi, the team captain of Team 10. This also means that during Cold's invasion, she was probably bit by one of the Claw Grimes, which led to what we see right now. Now to me, the most mysterious and intriguing member of this group is the creepy bald member of the Shinshu who almost seems to be the leader of the group. And he also is the one who we don't know exactly where he comes from and who his abilities are based off. So let's discuss the various theories that have been going around. There is one that has caught my attention because of the haircut that it possesses. I've never seen another character apart from Jigen who has the similar haircut. However, there is another character who has a similar haircut. That character is Suegi, the first person that we saw end up turning into a tree, as he did so after saving Sarda. And if you pay close attention to his hair, you will see that there are some similarities between Suegi and that version of the Shinsu, because they have similar haircuts. But there is a small, perhaps big reason why I personally don't think this is the case. Which leads me on perfectly to my own theory. I believe that this version of the Tentels, the one that looks like Jigen, is the one that gained sentience from Code mixing his DNA with the Tentels. And since Code is not an Otsutsuki, as he has the white karma, which is defective, it didn't cause the Tentels to turn into a chakra tree and bear fruits, but to turn into a sentient being. This is also supported by the fact that this Shinshu in particular has Tomoe's on his belly, similar to Hagoromo and Ishiki. And this is the biggest reason why I believe that this new villain group that I call Shinshu is going to be absolutely broken. Because we learn in the Naruto series that the Telt Beasts are not as strong as they can be unless they are controlled by a Jinjuriki. 
we find out this piece of information after Daedara and Toby captured the Three Tails. This also tells us that the Ten Tails in its animalistic form wasn't at its full potential or peak power, but now that it has gained ego and awareness and doesn't behave through instinct, it has now gained the ability to tap into its full potential. And when you think about the fact that the Ten Tails is said to be what led to the creation of the universe, I am truly scared of how far their potential truly goes. This is on top of the fact that they all possess the Renegon, which means that they all have the six main abilities that stem from this Shinjutsu. This means that we will be getting some very interesting matchups, as what I could see take place is very interesting. Starting up with the guy that looks like Sasuke. I believe that the people who will be fighting this version of the Tentails are either going to be Sarada or Boruto, or even both if they end up fighting both together. Sarada will fight Sasuke and end up using her Mangeki Sharingan abilities because we have to find out what her Mangeki Sharingan abilities allow her to do. Boruto will also fight this version of the Tentails because he has to save Sasuke in some sort of way and I believe that Boruto believes that if he destroys this version of the Tentails he may be saving Sasuke who has been turned into a tree. Kawaki will fight the guy that looks like Jigen alongside his moon Mitsuki who, due to the omnipotence, believes that it is Boruto. I believe that Team Ten and Hema will end up fighting the girl that took Moegi's appearance. And Code and Damien, or even Ida if she decides to fight because the planet might need her, will end up fighting Bug. I don't know if Code will fight these villains to be honest because he said that they are actually helping him in some sort of way. So he might be a coward and run away and we won't hear about Code for a while, a bit like Kashin Koji. However, to me, the most important sign that these villains are going to be written to perfection is the themes that they all represent. One of the things that make Naruto villains the best in fiction is what they represent, what they fight for, and what they wish to accomplish. And with the speech that the version of the Tentiles that looked like Jigen gave Boruto at the end of the chapter, we already know that the theme that these villains will explore is destiny, as run wherever you will, but no no matter where you go, you can never escape your destiny. This is why you have to watch this video right here to truly understand Boruto's character and how destiny plays a role in his character.